Thanks very much for having me here today um, and letting me have a chat about a campaign that I'm incredibly privileged to work on. Um, just while we're setting up, I'll give you a bit of an intro to Essential Media Communications. AMC's a um, full-service communications agency where our philosophy is to not only work on winning campaigns but also work on strengthening organisations through, through those campaigns and other communications activities. So um, while my background is in media and also in campaigning strictly through kind of a workplace organising context, um, that's a bit odd, but anyway. Um, we'll give it a go anyway. Um, my, my interest these days is working with digital media to help kind of um, organisations build their own audience and build their own sense of community. What's been interesting in what I've heard this afternoon is that kind of sense of um, belonging that we're trying to create um, through different forms of multicultural media um, and I think that's something that you could look at the disability um, uh, sector if you like and this campaign and how you might apply some of the things that we've learned through through it. So hopefully this will work. Hooray. So I'm going to take you on a bit of a roller coaster ride through the um, campaign for the NDIS which is Every Australian Counts um, and how that campaign has given essentially a voice to the voiceless and I think a lot of people in this room would kind of have a good sense of what it feels like to, to feel voiceless in our, in our media and in our community. So this is how um, people kind of commonly or stereotypically think of people with disabilities. And um, three parts of the disability sector came together to form the, the campaign for the NDIS, um, which wasn't even called the NDIS back a few years ago. It was just a great big idea to improve things for people who are living with disability, their families and carers. And so when, we, when the campaign arrived at AMC, they wanted a website to be built for the campaign for the National Disability Insurance Scheme. The problem was um, the words insurance and scheme made most people, you know, think of death and taxes. So um, we came up with the concept, and our research told us this too, we came up with the concept called Every Australian Counts, which is very inclusive, very positive, and also designed to reach out to all um, sides of politics. This is a multi-partisan campaign. So this is just a bit of an example of some of the campaign collateral that we um, produced over the course of the campaign. Um, it's designed, you know, to really tell that story of um, some of the issues that people face, but also it allows people to opt in and be part of the campaign. Um, and But these are our goals, to get 100,000 supporters by the end of 2011. The campaign launched at, on Australia Day 2011, and that every federal MP is visited by a supporter at least once. So, but how are we going to build community? And strangely, or not so strangely, it's through our stories. So we engineered this whole campaign to use different forms of media channels so that people could tell their own story, articulate the problem, but then also take that story direct to decision makers who could actually um, change the face of um, disability support and services in this country. So here's some of the online channels that we used, and I guess none of this is really new, but um, what we really set out to do was make sure that all of our channels reinforced each other. So our website, our free media coverage that we did w work with the campaign on, trying to get some media attention around particular events, but then also looking at our social media. So our campaign website had a very clear strategy behind it, which was to sign people up to support the NDIS with their email address, because once people did sign up to support the NDIS, we would communicate with them um, via email, and that has been really what has grown our supporter base so phenomenally over the last couple of years. Um, so people, all they had to do is join the campaign, tell someone else about it, or maybe five friends, and then talk to their MP. So we've been very consistent in going and talking with people. Um, our email has been very, very important for this campaign to keep people engaged and also take specific forms of action. And now we're able to, know, like we know from having run various different types of digital actions, like you know, writing to your MP or sending a message or, um, you know various forms of activities like that. We're, we're able now to really identify who are the most active people in our online communities and then they're the people we'll go to first if we really need um, support on other kinds of campaign actions that we run. Um, our social media has been extremely important as well. We now have more than 20,000 supporters on Facebook and um, a couple of thousand on Twitter. 
Um, Facebook has really been where the life of this campaign happens day to day and it's a very open forum. Um, we very rarely get trolling or any of those problem characters because it is genuinely evolved to be a very um, supportive and um, caring community and it's a very kind of open space. Um, the other thing we've done is these MP visits and because pe we just basically wanted to encourage people to tell their stories and take them straight to these decision makers, right? So we had to not only um, say, ask people to go and do it, but we had to give them support and resources so they would feel confident enough to do that. So that was done through face-to-face -face training by the campaign, but it was also done through um, providing resources packs and instructional videos on the campaign website so people knew how to make the phone call to their parliamentarian's office um, and what types of things they should say to make the appointment, right through to giving them something to do at the meeting, which was to, um, for our first set of visits, to get um, uh, their photo taken with their local MP um, holding this I count sign. And so the I count signs with these pictures, um, we've been able to put them into a gallery on the um, Every Australian Counts website so that then the politicians are held accountable to the promises they make to people in those one-on-one -on -one visits. Um, I can't tell you how much Hansard I've been through in the last couple of years and the Global Mail's just um, launched a really interesting project where you can search through Hansard by keyword and you can see the spike, you know, there's nothing about National Disability Insurance Scheme and then there's this massive spike over the last couple of years so that's something I'm pretty proud of. It's an interesting project if you want to look at how um, politicians relay the kind of messages that you're trying to get through to them. Um, so we also had a lot of face-to-face -face events you know, disability, I think someone here has been to one or have been engaged in that where we've asked people to have a simultaneous event at your local community um, organisation but have it at the same time, same day. It's a national day of action but it's a very friendly way for people to engage in the campaign and critically to get more people to sign up to the campaign to support them, the, the NDIS so then we can get people back into communicating with them via all those different forms of communication I mentioned earlier. Um, so these are some, some lovely photos from Disability and um, people really have kind of adopted that event as something that they've called their own. People made cakes in the shape of the logo, they have, um, people have abseiled for the NDIS, people have done all kinds of things um, to, to elevate the issue and we've run that event twice. So we've had, um, we had about 40,000 to 50,000 people take part in Disability um, in 2011 and again last year. Um, so the funny thing about this campaign is we kind of won a bit too early. <laughs> Not that I would ever say that on the record anywhere. But, um, but we had this kind of... The Productivity Commission released their report recommending the NDIS with all the various aspects. And then ver that was in August 2011. And very soon after that, we got um, an announcement from the Prime Minister that the government would adopt the recommendations at some stage in the future, which was terrific. And we got to celebrate that win. Um, but now, you know, ever since we've been very much um, in campaign mode of trying to keep ca politicians accountable to their promises and also to ensure that the implementation of a $7 billion reform scheme for disability is, actually happens. So we've been into the kind of grunt work of the campaign after this, which is, um, if you look at my old job, which was organising, you'd call it kind of the kind of implementation phase, the maintenance, and that's when the campaigning can be a lot more challenging, particularly given the current political context that we're all in at the moment. Um, so yeah, here we are, implementation. And so we actually ha had another really major event um, before the budget last year called um, our Make It Real rallies. We actually kind of relaunched the campaign to say it's not just about getting the support, it's actually about making the thing real, making the thing um, le uh, legislated and funded. So we had fantastic national rallies where we had um, about 15,000 people take part around the world. We, uh, around the country, around the world would be nice. Um, and then um, we also got people to um, contribute their own video stories and um, to the campaign website so people could tell their, their stories using another format. Um, we've also relaunched the campaign with more kind of a, a public facing message. We did some research and found out that people generally um, don't actually ever want to think about ever having someone with a disability in their family. It's just too horrible to even consider. We, you know, a lot of people in our community don't um, believe that necessarily at all. But 
Um, so we actually put a little skin on the front of the website to get people to think, um, you know, about the rights and fairness issues around um, disability support and why um, the National Disability Insurance Scheme can, can, um, can help fix that. So this is where we're at at the moment. We've got more than 150,000 supporters, which I would hazard a guess is the largest, largest um, campaign supporter base built up in, um, uh, at the moment in this country. Um, more than 20,000 on Facebook and um, counting. Um, we've done a whole lot of things where people have told stories by sending their messages to um, premiers or to MPs. We have, I, I think if you were to kind of summarise the whole campaign, it is about people telling their stories and telling them again and again and again through using new media until our decision makers listen. Um, media coverage hasn't been huge all the time. It's certainly getting bigger and bigger um, as it becomes a kind of critical platform for the um, Labor um, re-election campaign and obviously the um, coalition is under pressure to, to stump up the goods on this um, policy as well. But um, I think apart from what I always do at this, uh, at when I ever talk about the um, campaign for the NDIS, I say please go to the website right now and sign up because um, the more people who are behind this important campaign, the more likely uh, we will ensure it is fully implemented um, across the board over time. But then um, the only other thing I'd like to do is just kind of screen an example, which is a video now, if um, we could get the video happening, um, which kind of shows you how some of those stories, we've pulled them together and then kind of um, reflected them back to the community in a video that we, um, we made the video um, to be screened at the Make It Real rally in April, just ahead of the budget last year. And um, at the rally that it was screened at in Sydney, it was the rally where um, Prime Minister uh, Julia Gillard announced $1 billion in um, funding to, est um, including establishing five um, launch sites for the NDIS, ensuring that 20,000 people will get, um, that will experience the benefits of the NDIS for the first time. So we just need some volume there. <laughs> <laughs> 